But as for me, I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and the outcast of the people. All that look upon me have laughed me to scorn, and they have spoken with their lips and have wagged their heads. He hoped in the Lord, let him deliver him, let him save him, for he desired him. For thou art he that drewest me forth from the womb, my hope from the breast of my mother. On thee was I cast from the womb, from my mother's womb. Thou art my God. Depart not from me, for tribulation is nigh, for there is none to help me. Many bullocks have encircled me, fat bulls have surrounded me. They have opened their mouth against me, as a might, as might a lion, ravenous and roaring. And I have been poured out like water, and scattered are all my bones. My heart has become like wax, melting in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue hath cleaved to my throat, and into the dust of death hast thou brought me down. For many dogs have encircled me, the congregation of evildoers hath surrounded me. They have pierced my hands and my feet, they have numbered all my bones, and they themselves have looked and stared upon me. They have parted my garments among themselves, and for my vesture have they cast lots. But thou, O Lord, remove not thy help far from me, attend unto my aid, rescue my soul from the sword, even this only begotten one of mine from the hand of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion and the lowliness and my lowliness from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I hymn thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye that are of the seed of Jacob, glorify him. Let all fear him that are of the seed of Israel. For he hath not set at naught, nor abhorred the supplication of the pauper, nor hath he turned his face from me. When I cried unto him, he hearkened unto me. From thee is my praise, and the great church will I confess thee. My vows will I pay before them that fear thee. The poor shall eat and be filled, and they that seek the Lord shall praise him. Their hearts shall live forever and ever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and shall turn to the Lord, and all the kingdoms of the nations shall worship him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he himself is sovereign of the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth have eaten and worshipped. All they that go down into the earth shall fall down before him. Yea, my soul liveth for him, and my seed shall serve him. The generation that cometh shall be told of the Lord, and they shall proclaim his righteousness to a people that shall be born, which the Lord hath made. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When thou was crucified, O Christ, the tyranny of the enemy was destroyed, and his power was trodden down for neither an angel nor a man, but thou thyself, O Lord, didst save us. Glory be to thee, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. What shall we call thee, O full of grace? Heaven, for thou hast made the Son of Righteousness to dawn forth. Paradise, for thou hast brought forth the flower of immortality. Virgin, for thou hast remained incorrupt. Pure mother, for thou hast held in thy holy embrace a son, who is the God of all. Do thou entreat him to save our souls. <clears throat> to thee the veil of the temple is rent in reproach of the law transgressors. <coughs> And the sun hath hidden its rays at beholding the Lord crucified. Today the veil of the temple is rent in twain as a reproof against the transgressors. And the sun hideth its rays Seeing the master crucified. Why have the heathen raged and the peoples meditated empty things? Like a sheep thou hast been led to slaughter, O Christ King. And like a guileless lamb, O King of all, Thou wast nailed on the cross by the transgressing men of of our sins. O lover of mankind, the kings of the earth were roused, the rulers were assembled. 
together against the Lord and against Christ. Thou wast led as a sheep to the slaughter of Christ our King. And as an innocent lamb, thou wast nailed to the cross by wicked men for our sins. In thy love, oh man and Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Transgressors to seize thee. Thou didst cry, though ye smite the shepherd and scatter the twelve sheep. Even my disciples, yet I am able to bring to my side more than the twelve legions of angels, but I forbear that the unseen and hidden things which I have revealed to you through my prophets may be fulfilled, O Lord, glory be to both now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. <clears throat> Suffering the transgressors to lay hold on thee, O Lord, thou hast cried aloud. Although ye smite the shepherd and scatter abroad that twelve sheep, my disciples, yet could I call to my aid more than twelve legions of angels. <laughs> But in my patience I forbear that the hidden secrets I made known to you through my prophets may be fulfilled. O Lord, glory to thee. Let us attend. He went out and spoke. <coughs> He went forth and spake in a like manner. All mine enemies whispered against me. Against me they devised evils for me. He went forth and spake in a like manner. All mine enemies whispered against me. Against me they devised evils for me. Blessed is the man that hath understanding for the poor man and the pauper. In an evil day the Lord will deliver him. He went forth and spake in a like manner. All mine enemies whispered against me. Against me they devised evils for me. He went forth and spake in a like manner. All mine enemies whispered against me. Against me they devised evils for me. The reading is from the prophecy of Zechariah. These things the Lord doth say, I took my staff grace, and I broke it, annulling the covenant which I had made with all the peoples. So it was annulled on that day, and the traffickers and the sheep who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Then I said to them, If it seems right to you, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. And they weighed out as my wages thirty shekels of silver. Then the Lord said to me, Cast it into the treasury the lordly prices at which I was paid off by them. So I took the thirty shekels of silver and cast them into the treasury in the house of the Lord. Wisdom. And the reading is from the, the, the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. Let us attend. Brethren, far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, upon the Israel of God. Henceforth, 
Let no man trouble me, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. Wisdom, stand upright. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to thy spirit. And reading the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Let's attend. <clears throat> At that time when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. <clears throat> and they bound him <clears throat> and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. When Judas, the betrayer of Jesus, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it thyself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore that field hath been called the field of blood, Akeldama, to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of him who was valued who was valued by the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Thou hast said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. But Pilate said to him, Dost thou not hear how many things they testify against thee? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted, and they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. And when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For Pilate knew that they had delivered Jesus up out of envy. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And Pilate said, What of what evil hath he done? And they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, <clears throat> he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. <laughs> and all the people answered, His blood be upon us and on our children. Then Pilate released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Kyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry the cross of Jesus. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which meaneth the place of a skull, 
They offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots, that what was spoken by the prophet might be fulfilled. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou who wouldst destroy the temple and build it in three days, save thyself. If thou art the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests But the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusteth in God, let God deliver him now, if he desireth him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elia. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elia will come and save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Glory to thy long suffering, O Lord. My steps do thou direct according to thy saying, and let no iniquity have. Um, I'm interrupting the service just briefly to call to your attention that we have readings that follow the canonical order of the Holy Gospels according to the hours. Uh, frequently, when you come to services like this, you're, you're, this is no affront to anyone, our nose is in the book, and we're looking from one word to another. We're just looking at words. But it's helpful to, to know the big picture, so please bear with me. This is the first of the four canonical hours. So we have four hours, and we have four Gospels. So this one we read from Matthew's account of the Passion, Crucifixion, and Death of the God-Man. In the third hour, we read from Mark's account. From the uh, sixth hour, we read Luke's account. And the ninth hour, John's account. So one Gospel per canonical hour. So this is one way that we reflect on the passion of the Lord. It's different than what we did last night and what we will do at the next service, where we read composite accounts of all the Gospels regarding the given event. So last night, we had the service of Orthros for Holy and Great Friday, and in it we read the complete canonical Gospel account, all four Gospels of the crucifixion now of of Christ's uh, trial and crucifixion, but as a composite. But now we separate the accounts and we read them in their canonical order. That's why this service is so important, because it's very primitive. This is a very primitive service. 
And we call it the Great Hours. You know it by its nickname, the Royal Hours, the Imperial Hours, Vasilikes Royas in Greek, uh, the Imperial Hours, because it's the service from the ancient Roman Empire, and they use the ancient order from Antioch in this service, following the canonical scriptures. That's what's very important here. And as a footnote to this little note, I would like to ask the readers, when you read prophecies and apostolic readings, slow down. Please give us the reading carefully. If it goes by too fast, it's no profit to the hearers. I mean, this is no rebuke, but this is a very important service. It's a scriptural reading service. The Psalms, they can go fast, but the prophecies and the apostolic and gospel readings are very, very important indeed. So this is our reflection on the death of God, the Word, for our salvation. So may God give us a, a good attentiveness. My steps. My steps do thou direct according to thy saying, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the false accusation of men, and I will keep thy commandments, make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise, O Lord, that I may hymn thy glory and thy majesty all the day long. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All holy trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Come, let us all praise him who was crucified for us. For Mary beheld him on the tree and said, Thou that endurest the cross, though thou endurest the cross, yet thou art my Son and my God. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou who at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, O Christ God, who art long suffering, plenteous in mercy, most compassionate, who lovest the righteous and has mercy on sinners, who call us all for salvations and the promise of good things to come, receive, O Lord, our prayers at this hour. And God our life toward thy commandments, sanctify our souls, may chase our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass me, compass us round about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by their array, we may attain to the unity of the faith, the knowledge of thy unapproachable glory. For blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, thou who without corruption bearest God the word, and are truly Theotokos, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. May God have compassion upon us, and bless us, and may show the light of his countenance upon us, and be merciful us. Amen. O Christ, the true light, who dost enlighten and sanctify every man that cometh into the world, let the light of thy countenance be signed upon us, that in it we may behold the unapproachable light and guide our steps in the performance of thy commandments. By the intercession of thine all immaculate mother and of all thy saints. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before God our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. 
Judge them, O Lord, that do me injustice, war against them, that war against me. Take hold of weapon and shield and arise unto my help. Draw out a sword and shut the way against them that persecute me. Say to my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them that seek my soul be shamed and confounded. Let them be turned back and be utterly put to shame. They that devise evils against me. Let them become as dust before the face of the wind, an angel of the Lord also afflicting them. Let their way become darkness and sliding, an angel of the Lord also pursuing them. For without cause they have secretly prepared for me destruction in their snare. Without reason have they cast reproach on my soul. Let a snare come upon him which he knoweth not, and let the trap which he has hidden catch him, and into that same snare let him fall. But my soul shall rejoice in the Lord, and shall delight in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, O Lord, who is like unto thee, delivering the beggar from his hand of the, them that are stronger than he, yea, poor man and pauper from them that despoil him. Unjust witnesses rose up against me, things I knew not they asked me. They repaid me with evil things for good, for bearing and barrenness from my soul. But as for me, when they troubled me, I put on sackcloth, and I humbled my soul with fasting. And my prayer shall return to my bosom. As though it had been a neighbor, as though it had been our brother, so saw I the pleas as one mourning and sad of countenance, so humbled I myself. Yet against me they rejoiced and gathered together. Scourges were gathered together upon me, and I knew it not. They were rent asunder, yet not pricked in heart. They tempted me, they mocked me with mockery, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. O Lord, wilt will thou look upon me? Deliver my soul from their evil doing, even if only begotten one of mine from the lions. I will confess thee in the great congregation. Among a mighty people will I pray thee. Let not them rejoice against me that are justly are mine enemies. They did hate me without a cause, and wink with their eyes. For peaceably indeed they spake unto me, but in their wrath were they devising deceits. And they opened wide their mouth against me. They said, Well done, well done, our eyes have seen it. Thou hast seen it, O Lord, keep not silence. O Lord, depart not from me. Arise, O Lord, and be attentive unto, ju- unto my judgment, to my God and my Lord, unto my, ju- unto my cause. Judge me, O Lord, according to thy righteousness. O Lord, my God, let them not rejoice against me. Let them not say in their hearts, Well done, well done, our soul. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be shamed and confounded together and rejoice in our words. Let them be clothed with shame and confusion who speak boastful words against me. Let them rejoice and be glad who desire the righteousness of my cause. And let them that desire the peace of thy servant say continually, The Lord be magnified, and my tongue shall treat of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. O God, my praise do not pass over in silence, for the mouth of the sinner and the mouth of the deceitful man are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a deceitful tongue, and with words of hatred have they encompassed me, and they have warred against me without a cause. In return for my love, they have falsely accused me. But as for me, I gave myself to prayer, and they repaid me evil for good, and hatred for my love. Set thou a sinner over him, and let the devil stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him go forth condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and his bishopric let another take. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be vagabonds without a dwelling place, and let them beg. Let them be cast out from their ruined dwellings. Let his creditors search out all his substance, and let strangers plunder all his labors. Let there be for him no helper, nor anyone to pity his fatherless children. Let his children be given over to utter destruction, and a single generation let his name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be let them be before the Lord continually, and let the memory of them perish from off the earth, because he remembered not to show mercy, and persecuted a man that was poor and a beggar, and one broken in heart that he might slay him, and he loved cursing, and it shall come upon him, and he delighted not in blessing, and it shall be far from him. And he put on curse like a garment, and went in like water into his bowels, and like oil into his bones. Let it be for him like a garment wherewith he is clothed, and like a girdle wherewith continually he is girded. This is the dealing of the Lord with them that slander me, and with them that speak evils against my soul. But thou, Lord, O Lord, deal thou with me for thy name's sake, for thy mercy is good. Deliver me, for a poor man am I, and a pauper, and my heart is troubled within me. Like a shadow when the declineth am I taken away. I am shaken off as the locusts, as the locusts, 
My knees are grown weak through fasting, and my flesh is changed for want of oil. And I am become a reproach unto them. They saw me and wagged their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, and save me according to thy mercy. And let them know that this is thy hand, and that thou, O Lord, hast wrought it. And they will curse, and thou wilt bless. Let them that rise up against me be put to shame, for thy servant shall be glad. Let them that slander me be clothed with confusion, and let them be covered with shame as with mantle. And I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth, and in the midst of many will I praise him. For he hath stood at the right hand of the poor to save my soul from them that persecute me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against the only have I sinned and not this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail, and now I judge. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities and in sins of my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with his and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness, the bones of being humbled, and shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, with the governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise, when thou hast desired sacrifice, I have given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken, and humble God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure in Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation, and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and the ages of ages. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, O God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, O God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord, the Jews condemned thee. Glory. glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Lord, the Jews condemned thee to death that art the life of all, they who by means of the rod walked across the Red Sea, nailed thee to a cross, and they who were suckled with honey from a rock offered thee gall, but thou didst endure willingly that thou mightest free us from slavery to the enemy. O Christ God, glory be to thee. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Theotokos, thou art the true vine that hath blossomed forth the fruit of life, Thee do we supplicate, intercede, O Lady, together with the Apostles and all the saints that our souls find in mercy. For fear of the Jews, O Lord Peter, thy friend and neighbor, deny thee morning us. Turn not away from my tears, for I said that I would keep faith but did not, O compassionate one. Wherefore receive thou the, our repentance and have mercy on us. Fear of the Jews, thy friend and companion, Peter denied thee, O Lord, and in bitter grief he cried aloud. Pass not by my tears in silence, O compassionate Master. For I said I would keep faith, and I have not kept it. Accept also our repentance, and have mercy on me. Unto my words give ear, O Lord, hear my cry. Before thy venerable crucifixion, O Lord, when the soldiers were mocking thee, the noetic hosts were stricken with amazement, for thou who didst adorn the earth with flowers, was wreathed with the crown of derision, and thou who didst clothe the firmament with clouds, 
this with a robe of mockery. For through such a dispensation was thy compassion made known, O Christ, our great mercy, glory to thee. Attend to the voice of my supplication, O my King and my God. When the soldiers mock me, O Lord, before thy death upon the precious cross, the heavenly foes were struck with wonder, for thou who hast adorned the earth with flowers, wast arrayed in a crown of shame, and thou who hast wrapped the firmament in clouds, was both in a robe of mockery. Thus in thy economy, O Christ, thou hast made known thy compassion and great mercy, glory to thee. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As thou wast led to the cross, thus didst thou cry, O Lord, for what deed would ye crucify me, O ye Jews? Because I strengthened your paralytics, because I raised your dead ass from sleep, I healed the woman who had an issue of blood, and showed mercy upon the Canaanite woman. For what deed, O ye Jews, do ye wish to slay me? But ye shall look on him whom ye now pierce, who is the Christ, O ye transgressors. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. When thou wast led to crucifixion, thou hast cried, O Lord, for what deed do ye seek to crucify me, O ye Jews? Is it because I made your paralyzed to walk, because I raised the dead as though from sleep? I healed her that had an issue of blood, and I took pity on the women of Canaan. For what day do ye seek to kill me, O ye Jews? But, O transgressors, ye shall look on Christ, O now ye be. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. For I am ready for scourges. And my sorrow is continually before me. For I am ready for scourges. And my sorrow is continually before me. <coughs> the reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. <coughs> These things the Lord doth say. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens. He wakens my ear to hear as though who have been taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been confounded, therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame, 
He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in darkness and has no light, yet trusts in the name of the Lord and relies upon his God? Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who set brands alight, walk by the light of your fire and by the brands which you have kindled. This shall you have for my hand. You shall lie down in torment. Wisdom. <coughs> The reading is from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. Let us attend. Brethren, while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we are now justified by his blood, which more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more. Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? Wisdom, stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all, and, and to thy spirit. Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. <coughs> At that time, the soldiers led Jesus away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Kyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross of Jesus. And they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which meaneth the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mingled with Miron, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for him <coughs> to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, He was reckoned with the transgressors. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, thou who wouldst destroy the temple and build it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And then the sixth hour had, and when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, <clears throat> Eloi, Eloi, lama salakthani, which meaneth, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Eliah. <coughs> and one ran and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elia will come and take him down. Then Jesus uttered a loud cry and gave up the spirit. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. 
And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he thus cried out and gave up the spirit, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and Joses and Salome, who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Glory to thy long-suffering, O Lord. Blessed is the Lord God, blessed is the Lord God, day by day. The God of our salvation shall prosper us along the way. Our God is the God of salvation. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. All holy Father, you have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins, master pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and on the way to the ages. Amen. Come, let us all praise him who was crucified for us, for Mary beheld him on the tree and said, Though thou endurest the cross, yet thou art my son and my God. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, O Christ God, who art long suffering, plenteous in mercy, most compassionate, who lovest the righteous and hast mercy on sinners who calls to all the salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive, O Lord, our prayers at this hour, and guide our life according toward thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, make chaste our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by their array, we may attain to the unity of the faith, and to the knowledge of that unapproachable glory, for blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou without corruption bearest God the word, and our truly Theotokos we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Thank God, have compassion upon us, and bless us, and show the light of the company. Amen. O Sovereign Master, God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and Thou, O Holy Spirit, one Godhead, one power, have mercy on me, a sinner, and by the judgments which Thou knowest, save me, Thine unworthy servant, for blessed art Thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before God, our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. O God, in thy name save me, and in thy strength do thou judge me. O God, hearken unto my prayer, give ear unto the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and mighty men have sought after my soul, and have not set God before themselves. For behold, God helpeth me, and the Lord is the protector of my soul. He will bring evils upon mine enemies, utterly destroy them by thy truth. Willingly shall I sacrifice unto thee, I will confess thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For out of every affliction hast thou delivered me, and mine eyes have looked down upon mine enemies. Rescue me, O Lord, from the evil man, from the unjust man, deliver me. 
who have devised injustice in their heart all the day long have they arrayed themselves for war. They have wetted their tongue like that of a serpent, the venom of, ap- venom of asps is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hand of the sinner, rescue me from unjust men who have devised to undermine my steps. The proud have hid a snare for me, and with cords have they spread a snare for my feet. Stumbling blocks near the paths have they set for me. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, be dear, O Lord, unto the voice of my supplication. Lord, O Lord, thou strength of my salvation, thou hast overshadowed my head in the day of battle. <coughs> because of my desire, O Lord, give me not up unto the sinner. They have taken counsel against me, forsake me not, lest they should be exalted. As for the head of those that encircle me, the mischief of their lips shall cover them. Coals shall fall upon them, and fire shalt thou cast them down, and they shall not stand in afflictions. A babbling man shall not prosper on the earth. Evils shall hunt an unjust man to his destruction. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and the justice of the paupers. Surely the righteous shall confess thy name, and the upright shall dwell in thy presence. He that dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He shall say unto the Lord, Thou art my helper and my refuge. He is my God, and I will hope in him. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunters and from every troubling word. With his shoulders will he overshadow thee, and under his wings shalt thou have hope. With a shield will his truth encompass thee. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the thing that walketh in darkness, nor for the mishap and demon of noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But unto thee shall it not come nigh. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and thou shalt see the reward of sinners. For thou, O Lord, art my hope, thou thou madest the Most High thy refuge. No evils shall come nigh thee, and no scourge shall draw nigh unto thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. On their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Upon the asp and basilisk shalt thou tread, and thou shalt trample upon the lion and dragon. For he hath set his hope on me, and I will deliver him. I will shelter him, because he hath known my name. He shall cry unto me, and I will hearken unto him. I am with him in affliction, and I will rescue him and glorify him. With length of days will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord have, mer- <clears throat> Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Salvation hast thou wrought in the midst of the earth, O Christ God. Thou didst stretch out thine immaculate hands upon the cross, gathering together all the nations which cry, O Lord, glory be to thee, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Seeing that we have no boldness on account of our many sins, do thou beseech him that was born of thee, O Virgin Theotokos, for the supplication of a mother availed much to win the master's favor. Disdain not the prayers of sinners, O most august one, for merciful is he and mighty to save, he that deigned to suffer for our sake. Thus saith the Lord unto the Jews, O my people, what have I done unto thee, or how have I vexed thee? To thy blind have I given sight, thy lepers have I cleansed, the men upon a bed did I restore. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And how hast thou recompensed me in the set of manna gall, in the set of water vinegar, in the set of loving me, nail me to the cross. No longer will I cover it. I will call to me the nations, and they shall glorify me with the Father and the Spirit, and I will give them life everlasting. Thus saith the Lord to the Jews, O my people, what have I done unto thee? For wherein have I wearied thee? I gave light to thy blind and cleansed thy lepers. I raised up the man who lay upon his bed. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And how hast thou repaid me? 
Instead of manna thou hast given me coal, instead of water vinegar, instead of loving me thou hast nailed me to the cross. I will cover you no more, I shall call my Gentiles, and they shall glorify me with the Father and the Spirit, and I shall bestow on them life eternal. They gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. O ye lawgivers of Israel, ye Jews and Pharisees, the choir of the apostles crieth unto you, Behold the temple which ye destroyed, behold the Lamb which ye crucified. Delivered him, ye delivered him to the grave, but by his own power he is risen. Be not deceived, O ye Jews, for it is he that saved you in the sea, and fed you in the wilderness. He is the life and light and peace of the world. Save me, O God, for the waters are coming to my soul. O lawgivers of Israel, ye Jews and Pharisees, the company of the apostles cry and cry out to you. Behold the temple that ye have destroyed, behold the land that ye have crucified. He gave him over to the tomb, but by his own power he hath risen again. Be not deceived, ye Jews, for this is he who saved you in the sea and fed you in the wilderness. He is the life and light and the peace of the world. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Come, O ye Christ-bearing people, let us behold what Judas, the traitor, hath plotted with the lawless priests against our Savior. Today they have passed a sentence of death against the immortal word, and delivering him to Pilate, they crucified him at the place of the school. And while suffering these things, our Savior cried out, saying, Father, forgive them this sin, that the nations might learn of my resurrection. My resurrection from the dead, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, Christ bearing people, let us see what Judas the traitor hath plotted with the lawless priest against the Savior. Today they judge the immortal word guilty of death. They delivered him to Pilate and crucified him on Golgotha. And as our Savior suffered these things, he cried aloud, saying, Father, forgive them this sin, that the Gentiles may know my resurrection from the dead. <coughs> o Lord, our Lord, how wonderful is thy name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how wonderful is thy name in all the earth. Magnificence is lifted high above the heavens. O Lord, our Lord, how wonderful is thy name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how wonderful is thy name in all the earth. Wisdom. 
The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. These things the Lord doth say, Behold, my servant shall prosper, he shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has not been told them they will see, and that which they did have not heard they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely... He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth, by oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when he makes himself an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in travail. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Wisdom. Readings from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Let us Brethren, He who sanctifies and those who are sanctified have all one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will proclaim thy name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same nature, that through death, He might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong bondage. For surely it is not with angels that he is concerned, but with the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brethren in every respect, so that he might become merciful and and faithful high priest in the service of God to make expiation for the sins of people, for himself, for he, for because he himself has suffered and been tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. Wisdom, stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all, and to thy spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord. Let us attend. At that 
time to others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people who stood by watching and the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou art the king of the Jews, save thyself. There, were also an, there was also an inscription over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, If thou art the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, since thou art under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the spirit. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he glorified God and said, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the multitudes who assembled to see the sight, when they saw what had taken place, returned beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and saw these things. Glory to thy long suffering. Let thy compassions quickly go before us, O Lord, for we are become exceedingly poor. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the sake of the glory of thy name. O Lord, deliver us and be gracious unto our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and the way of the Amen. Come, let us all praise him who was crucified for us. For Mary beheld him on the tree and said, Though thou endurest the cross, yet thou art my son and my God. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord of 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 mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou who at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, O Christ God, who art long suffering, plenteous in mercy, most compassionate, who lovest the righteous and hast mercy on sinners who callest all to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive, O Lord, Lord, our prayers at this hour, and guide our life to thy commandments. 
Sanctify our souls, make chaste our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by their array, we may attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the set of him. Thee who without corruption gave us birth to God, the word of God, and the proceed to be magnified. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. May God have compassion upon us and bless us. May he show the light of his countenance upon us and be merciful and us. Amen. O God and Lord of hosts and maker of all creation, who in the tender compassion of thine unfathomable mercy didst send down thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our race, and by his precious cross didst rend the handwriting of our sins, and thereby didst triumph over the principalities and powers of darkness. Do thou thyself, O man befriending master, accept also from us sinners these prayers of thanksgiving and entreaty, and deliver us from every destructive and dark transgression, and from all enemies, both visible and invisible, that seek to do us evil. Nail down our flesh with the fear of thee, and incline not our hearts unto words or, or thoughts of evil, but pierce our souls with longing for thee, so that ever looking to thee and being guided by thy light as we behold thee, the unapproachable and everlasting light, we may send up unceasing praise and thanksgiving unto thee, the Father which is without beginning, with thine only begotten Son, thine all holy and good life, Holy Spirit, now and ever and through the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before God our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Save me, O my God, for the waters are come into my soul. I am stuck fast in the midst of the mire of the deep, and there is no sure standing. I am come into the deeps of the sea, and the tempest hath overwhelmed me. I am grown weary with crying. My throat is become hoarse, and my hoping from my hoping in my God, mine eyes have failed me. They that hate me without a cause are multiplied more than the hairs of my head. My enemies are grown strong, and they that persecute me unjustly. Then did I restore that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my transgressions are not hid from thee. Let not them wait that wait on thee be ashamed for my sake, O Lord, thou Lord of hosts. Nor let them that seek after thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face, I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto the sons of my mother. For the zeal of thy house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee have fallen on me. Yea, with fasting I covered my soul, and it was turned into a reproach for me. And I made sackcloth my clothing, and I became a proverb to them. And they prayed it against me, they that sit in the gates, and they made a song about me, and they, they that drank wine. But as for me, with my prayer, I cry unto thee, O Lord, it is time for thy good pleasure. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hearken unto me in the truth of thy salvation. Save me from the mire that I may not be stricken therein. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and from the depths of the waters. Let not the tempest of water overwhelm me, nor let the deep swallow me up, nor let this pit shut me its mouth upon me. Hearken unto me, O Lord, for thy mercy is good. According to the multitude of thy compassions, look upon me. Turn out thy countenance away from thy servant, for I am afflicted. Quickly hearken unto me. Attend unto my soul, and deliver it, because of mine enemies. Rescue me. For thou knowest my reproach, my shame, and my humiliation. Before thee are all that afflict me. My soul hath awaited reproach and misery. And I waited for one that would grieve with me, but there was no one. And for them that would comfort me, but I found none. And they gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table before them be a, for a snare, for a recompense, and for a stumbling block. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and their back do thou continually bow down. Pour out upon them thy wrath, and let the fear of thy wrath take hold upon them. Let their habitation be made desolate, and in their tents let there be none to dwell. For they persecuted him whom thou hast smitten, and to the pain of my wounds have they added... Add iniquity to their iniquity, and let not them enter into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and with the righteous let them not be written. Poor and in sorrow am I, may thy salvation, O God, be quick to help me. I will praise the name of my God with an ode. I will magnify him with praise, and this shall please God more than a young calf that hath horns and hoofs. 
Let beggars behold it and be glad. Seek after God, and your soul shall live. For the Lord hath hearkened unto the poor, and hath not despised them that are fettered for his sake. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the sea and all the creeping things therein. For God will save Zion, and the cities of Judea, Judea shall be built, and they shall dwell therein, and inherit it, and the seed of thy servants shall possess it, and they that love thy name shall dwell therein. O God, be attentive unto my unto helping me, O Lord, make haste to help me. Let they be let them, let them be ashamed and confounded, that seek after my soul, let them be turned back and brought to shame. That desire evils against me, let them be turned back straightway in shame, and saying to me, Well done, well done. Let them be glad and rejoice in thee, all that seek after thee, O God, and let them that love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. But as for me, I am poor and needy, O God, come unto my aid. My helper and my deliverer art thou, O Lord, make long, long tarrying. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hearken unto me, for poor and needy am I, preserve my soul, for I am holy. Save thy servant, O my God, that hopeth in thee. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for unto thee will I cry all the day long. Make glad the soul of thy servant, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. For thou, O Lord, art good and gentle, plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, attend unto the voice of my supplication. In the day of my affliction have I cried unto thee, for thou hast heard me. There is none like unto thee among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like thy works. All the nations whom thou hast made shall come and shall worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and workest wonders. Thou alone art God. Guide me, O Lord, in thy way, and I will walk in thy truth. Let my heart rejoice that I may fear thy name. I will confess thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forever. For great is thy mercy upon me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost Hades. O God, transgressors have risen up against me, and the assembly of the mighty have sought after my soul. They have not set them, be, has not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, my God, art compassionate and merciful, longsuffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Look upon me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thy handmaiden. Work in me a sign unto good, and let them that hate me behold and be put to shame. For thou, O Lord, hast hope in me and comforted me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Seeing the author of life hanging on the cross, the thief said, If he who was crucified with us were not God incarnate, the Son would not have been his rays. <clears throat> Nor would the earth have quaked and trembled. But do thou who endureth all things remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O thou who for our sake was born of a virgin, and did suffer crucifixion, O good one, and didst despoil death by death, and as God didst reveal resurrection, this day not those whom thou hast fashioned with thine own hand. Show forth thy love for mankind, O merciful one. Accept the Theotokos that gave thee birth and intercedes for us, and do thou, our Savior, save a despairing people. A strange wonder it was to behold the Creator of heaven, and earth hanging upon the cross. The sun was darkened, and the day was changed again to night. And the earth gave up the bodies of the dead from their tombs. With them we worship the Osiris. It was astonishing to see the maker of heaven and earth hanging upon the cross. To behold the sun darkened, the day turning back into night, and the earth sending up from the graves the bodies of the dead. With them we also worship thee, save us. They have parted my garments amongst themselves, and for my vesture they have cast lots. 
When the transgressors nail the O Lord of glory to the cross, thou hast cried aloud to them, How have I grieved you, or wherein have I angered you? Before me, who delivered you from tribulation? And how do ye now repay me? Ye have given me evil for good, in return for the pillar of fire. Ye have carried me to the cross. In return for the cloud, ye have dug a grave for me. Instead of manna, ye have given me gall. Instead of water, ye have given me vinegar to drink. Henceforth I shall call the Gentiles, and they shall glorify me with the Father and the Holy Spirit. When the turn, they gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. When the transgressors nail me, the Lord of glory to the cross, thou didst cry unto them, How have I grieved you, or in what have I angered you, before I came? Who delivered you from affliction? And now how do you requite me evil for goodness? For the pillar of fire ye nailed me to the cross. For the cloud ye had dug a grave for me. For manna ye offered me gall. For the water ye gave me vinegar to drink. Wherefore I will call the nations, and they will glorify me with the Father and the Holy Spirit. With full 
most purple is he wrapped about. He that wrappeth the heavens with clouds. What fittings did he receive? Who freed Adam in thy joy now? With nails was he affixed, he that is the bridegroom of the We worship thy passion, O Father. We worship thy passion, O Father. We worship thy passion, O of Jeremiah. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then thou didst show me their evil deeds, and I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the fruit with its tr- the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. Let his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judgest righteously, who triest the heart and the mind, let me see thy vengeance upon them, for to thee have I committed my cause. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the men of Anathoth, who seek your life and say, Do not prophesy in the name of the Lord, or you will die by our hand. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword, their sons and their daughters shall die by famine, and none of them shall be left. For I will bring evil upon the men of Anathoth, the year of their punishment. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I complain to thee, yet I would plead my my, my case before thee. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why do all who are treacherous thrive? Thou plantest them, and they take root. They grow and bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their heart. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou seest me and triest my mind toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and the grass of every field wither? For the wickedness of those who dwell in it, the beasts and the birds are swept away. Because men said, he will not see our latter end. If you have raced with men on foot and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? And if in a safe land you fall down, 
How will you do in the jungle of the Jordan? In my heritage, is my heritage to me like a speckled bird of prey? Are the birds of prey against her roundabout? Go assemble all the wild beasts. Bring them to devour. Many shepherds have destroyed my vineyard. They have trampled down my portion. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it a desolation. Desolate it mourns to me. Thus says the Lord concerning all my evil neighbors who touch the heritage which I have given my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out from their land, and I will pluck up the house of Judah from among them. And after I have plucked them up, I will again have compassion on them. And I will bring them again, each to his heritage, and each to his land. Wisdom. The reading is from the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we sin deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful prospect of, prospect of judgment, in a fury of fire, which will consume the adversaries. A man who has violated the law of Moses dies without mercy at the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the man who has spurned the Son of God and profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Wisdom, stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And, and to thy spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. At that time, when they had crucified Jesus, the soldiers took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Then the soldiers, so the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and break the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who has seen it hath borne witness, his testimony is true, 
for he knoweth that he telleth the truth, that ye also may believe. For these things took place, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they have peace. Glory to thy long suffering, Lord. Deliver us not of utterly for thy holy name's sake. Neither disannul thou thy covenant, and cause not thy mercy to depart from us, for Abraham's sake, thy beloved, and for Isaac's sake, thy servant, and for Israel's thy holy one. Holy God, holy might, be holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy might, be holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy might, be holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All, all Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto today. Amen. Come, let us all praise Him who was crucified for us. For Mary beheld Him on the tree and said, Though Thou endurest the cross, yet Thou art my Son and my God. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Thou who at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth are worshipped and glorified, O Christ God, who art long suffering, plenteous in mercy, and most compassionate, who lovest the righteous and has mercy upon sinners, who call us all to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and guide our life toward thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, make chaste our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass us round about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by their array, we may attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the unapproachable glory. For blessed art thou unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, thou who without corruption bearest God the word, and are truly Theotokos, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. To God, compassionate, bless us, and show the light of his countenance upon us, and be merciful in our hearts. Amen. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who art long suffering in the face of our transgressions, and who has brought us even unto this present hour, wherein thou didst hang upon the life creating tree and didst make a way into paradise for the grateful thief, and by death didst destroy death, be gracious unto us sinners, thine unworthy servants, for we have sinned and committed iniquity, and are not worthy to lift up our eyes and behold the height of heaven. For we have abandoned the way of thy righteousness, and have walked in the desires of our hearts. But we beseech thee, we beseech thine incomparable goodness. Spare us, O Lord, according to the multitude of thy mercy, and save us for thy holy name's sake, for our days have wasted away in vanity. Deliver us from the hand of the adversary, and forgive us our sins. Mortify our carnal mind, that, putting aside the old man, we may be clad with the new, and live for thee, our master and guardian. And that thus, by following in thy commandments, we may attain to rest everlasting, where is the, wherein is the dwelling place of all them that rejoice. For thou art indeed the true God, the true joy, 
and gladness of them that love thee, O Christ our God, and to thee do we send up glory with thy Father, who is up without beginning, thine all holy and good and life giving creating spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Um, please have a seat. Uh, if you have to go, it's okay to depart now. Um, I'm going to read a very short reading uh, from the uh, Triodium, from the uh, ancient book of the Triodium for Holy and Great Friday, and then a very brief uh, homily from St. Cyril of Alexandria on the blood of Christ. On this day, Holy and Great Friday, we celebrate the awesome, holy, and saving passion of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the spitting, the blows with the palm of the hand, the buffeting, the mockery, the reviling, the wearing of the purple robe, the reed, the sponge, the vinegar, the nailing, the lance, and above all, the crucifixion and death, which he condescended to endure willingly for our sake, and also the saving confession of the grateful thief upon the cross. After our Lord Jesus Christ was sold for 30 pieces of silver and was betrayed by a friend and disciple, he was led to Annas, the high priest. Annas, again, sent the Lord to Caiaphas, where he was spat upon and at the same time mocked and laughed at. He heard them saying to him, Prophesy to us, O Christ, who is the one who struck you? Then many false witnesses and accusers arrived, perhaps because he said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And because he said about himself, I am the Son of God. Or because he said, Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. At that point, the high priest tore his own garment, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of witnesses? Look, now you have heard his blasphemy. And when morning came, Jesus was led to the praetorium by, uh, to Pilate, and they did not enter, as they said, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Then when Pilate came, he asked them about Jesus, saying, What accusation do you bring against this man? Since he did not find any reasonable cause for the accusation, he sent him to Caiaphas. Since he was the one who was seeking his execution, and Caiaphas sent him back again to Pilate. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. The Jews said this, so Pilate would pronounce the judgment of death on the cross. Pilate asked Jesus whether he was the king of the Jews, and Jesus acknowledged this and said that his kingdom is eternal and not of this world. Pilate wished to release Jesus and first told the crowd that he did not find any serious accusation against him. Then he reminded the Jews of their custom of releasing a prisoner of their choice on the feast of the Passover. The crowd named Barabbas the robber as an acceptable choice, but not Christ. Pilate then sought to placate the Jews, but with no success. Leading him out through the soldiers, he first had Jesus scourged. Then clothing him with a purple cloak, the soldiers forced a crown of thorns upon his most pure head and placed a reed in his right hand as though it were a royal scepter. All this time, the soldiers were mockingly sneering and shouting a parody of their salute to Caesar, Hail, King of the Jews. This Clearly, this public humiliation and torment was for the gratification of the Jews, for Pilate showed that he was acting against his conscience by saying again, I find no fault in this man. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. While these things were being said, Jesus was silent. But the crowd cried out to Pilate, Crucify him, crucify him. Thus, they wished to destroy him through an inglorious and shameful death so that they might destroy the noble fame that Jesus possessed. Pilate incited their ethnic pride and said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Since they could not get their way by any other means, they uttered this blasphemy because Jesus clearly called himself the Son of God, and they wanted Caesar to stand in his place so that their madness would be justified. Therefore they said, Whoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. While these events were taking place, Pilate's wife, 
Procula Claudia, we commemorate her on October 27th, sent the message to him that she was troubled by a fearful dream, and she said, have nothing to do with the just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Then Pilate washed his hands and clearly rejected the responsibility for the blood of the righteous one. But the Jews cried out, His blood be upon us and upon our children. If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Even though Pilate surely knew that Jesus was not guilty, he feared Caesar and thus confirmed the Lord's condemnation to death on the cross, and he released Barabbas. When Judas beheld this, he threw away the silver coins and went out and hanged himself from a tree. Afterwards, his belly became greatly distended, opening up and finally bursting apart. The soldiers mocked Jesus, hitting his head with a reed, and they placed a cross on him to bear. Then they coerced Simon of Kyrene, obliging him to carry the cross. About the third hour, they reached the place of the skull, in Aramaic, Golgotha, and they crucified him there. On the right and on the left, they suspended two thieves so that Jesus would appear to be an evildoer. In a spirit of greed, the soldiers divided his garments, but they cast lots for his seamless tunic. They performed each deed with excessive animosity as if they were drunk. They did not only do these things, but they also feigned ignorance saying ironically to Jesus on the cross, Aha, thou who destroys the temple and build it in three days, save thyself and come down to the cross, from the cross. And they continued, Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. However, if they had reflected and understood correctly, they would have wished to have recourse to him without hesitation because he proved himself to be not only king of Israel, but even of all the world. For what other meaning was there when the sun was darkened during the crucifixion of Christ at the third hour, in the middle of the day, but that the Lord's passion would be revealed to all men? Likewise, when the earth shook and the rocks were rent asunder, did this not reprove the stony-heartedness of the Jews? And when many bodies arose for the acknowledgement of the common resurrection, did it not provide the evidence that the power of the suffering one might appear? Moreover, when the curtain of the temple was split in twain, did it not mean that the temple was certainly angered because the one who was glorified in it was suffering, thereby revealing these things which were not apparent to the multitudes? Therefore, at the third hour, Christ was crucified, as says the divine Mark. From the sixth hour until the ninth, there was darkness over the whole land. The centurion Longinus, whom we commemorate on October 16th, seeing these marvelous events, and especially the darkening of the sun, cried out with a mighty voice, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Of the two thieves... One reviled Jesus, but the other reproached him, most profoundly reproving him and confessed Christ to be the Son of God. Because of his confession, the Savior rewarded his faith and promised that he would be with him in paradise that very day. The good thief is commemorated on October 12th. When every sort of abuse had been hurled at the Lord Jesus, Pilate wrote out his title, which read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, and placed it on the cross. Therefore, the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And when the Savior said, I thirst, they put vinegar on hyssop and brought it to him. After saying, It is finished, he inclined his head and gave up the spirit. He was crucified on the day when the moon was full and an hour when, according to the old law, the Passover lamb was to be slain. These facts are described in Exodus chapter 12. 
When all had fled away, his mother alone kept vigil at the Holy Cross with her sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, the one, some say, Joachim begot in accordance with the Mosaic law, since his brother Cleopas died childless, but this assertion is false. Mary Magdalene and John, the disciple beloved by him. Then the ungrateful Jews, not being able to tolerate seeing the bodies on the crosses, since it was the great day of the Passover, asked Pilate that the legs of the condemned might be broken so that the death might come more quickly. They broke the legs of the thieves since they were still alive, and coming upon Jesus, they saw that he had already died, and they refrained from breaking his legs. One of the soldiers, doing a favor for the ungrateful ones, took his spear and pierced the right side of Christ. And immediately there flowed forth blood and water. On the one hand, the outpouring was as from a man, and on the other hand, on behalf of mankind. That is, the blood for the sake of Holy Communion of the divine sanctified elements and the water for the sake of holy baptism. In fact, this twofold fountain constitutes the foundation of the holy mysteries, holy baptism and holy communion. Also, John, the theologian, saw and bear witness of these events and his witness is true because he was present at all these happenings and after he saw them, he recorded them. And for if they were false, clearly he would not have written them, for such things would have appeared as a dishonor to the teacher. It is said that when he was present at that time, he collected in some kind of vessel the divine and all holy blood from the life-giving side. Moreover, while these extraordinary events were being accomplished, when night approached, Joseph of Arimathea arrived he was a disciple from the beginning, as the others, but secretly. He then went to Pilate with boldness, since he was clearly known by him, asked for the body of Jesus, and was given permission to take it. Then he immediately took the divine body down from the Holy Cross with all reverence. And when night came, Nicodemus arrived, bearing a certain mixture of myrrh and aloes, which had been prepared for the special purpose of anointing the dead. And he wrapped the holy body in a winding cloth, as was the regular custom of the Jews. They then entombed the body of the Lord nearby in a garden tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, which had been cut out into rock, rolling a great stone over the entrance. In this tomb, no one had been buried before, so that when Christ arose, the Jews might not attribute the resurrection to another person. The mixture of aloes and myrrh strongly cemented the winding cloth to the body of Christ, so that when the winding cloth and the face cloth would be seen folded up in the tomb, no one would suppose that his body had been stolen away. How would it have been possible that anyone could have detached the linen so firmly glued to the flesh by the burial ointments? However, those foolish men who shaped this falsehood did not know that in accordance with the economy of God, all these proofs remained inside the tomb for the censuring of their slander. All these events marvelously happened on Friday. Accordingly, the God-bearing fathers decreed that we should commemorate all these events with a compunctious and contrite heart. Furthermore, the church has received from the time of the holy apostles has given commandment that every Friday is to be observed as a fast day in remembrance of Christ's holy passion and his life-giving death. It is fitting to understand that on the sixth day of the week, Friday, the Lord was crucified because on the sixth day of the week during creation, Adam, the first man, was formed. <clears throat> Furthermore, at the sixth hour of the day, he was suspended on the holy cross because at the sixth hour, tradition tells us, Adam stretched out his hands toward the forbidden tree to eat the fruit and inherited death. 
Therefore, it was fitting that at the same shattering hour, the old Adam would be created anew. The Lord's crucifixion was in a garden because Adam was deceived in a garden in paradise. The bitter drink which the Lord tasted on the cross healed the tasting of Adam. The holy cross replaced the tree in paradise. The slap on the face signified our awakening from the stupor of sin. The spitting and the dishonorable behavior toward the Lord makes manifest the value he places on us. The crown of thorns relieved us from the curse surrounding the head of Adam and Eve. The purple cloak replaced the garment of skin and symbolized the royal garment with which he covers us. The nails indicated our total immobility in our sins. The pierced side of the Lord from which our salvation came forth represented the side of Adam from which Eve came forth and out of whom the transgression occurred. The spear removed the fiery sword which guarded paradise after the disobedience. The water from the side was an image of holy baptism. The blood and the reed were the means through which the Savior, as though writing in imperial red ink, decreed as a king from on high the restoration of the ancient homeland. It is said that the skull of Adam lay where Christ, as the head of all, was crucified, and Adam was baptized through the blood of Christ, which flowed from him down onto Adam's skull. It is called the place of the skull because during the flood, the earth expelled the the skull of Adam, which rolled around by itself in a circle. And this is viewed as a fearsome sign. The holy prophet and King Solomon, out of respect for the forefather, covered it up with many stones. Moreover, the eminent saints say, as is the tradition, that Adam was buried there by an angel. Therefore, where Adam's corpse lay, there Christ stood as an everlasting king, the new Adam, healing by the wood of the holy cross the old Adam, who had fallen by the wood of the tree. It should be noted that on this day, there is no celebration of the divine liturgy, nor the liturgy of the pre-sanctified gifts. On this day of the holy crucifixion, we neither eat nor drink anything according to the words which the Lord spake to the Pharisees. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Yet if anyone is weak or old and cannot keep the fast, let him be given bread and water after sunset. For for, O Christ our God, through thy boundless compassion for our sake, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. A homily on the power of Christ's blood by St. John Chrysostom, Patriarch of Constantinople. If we wish to understand the power of Christ's blood, we should go back to the ancient account of its prefiguration in Egypt. Sacrifice a lamb without blemish, commanded Moses, and sprinkle its blood on your doors. If we were to ask him what he meant and how the blood of an irrational beast could possibly save men endowed with reason, His answer would be that the saving power lies not in the blood itself, but in the fact that it is a sign of the Lord's blood. In those days, when the destroying angel saw the blood on the doors, he did not there enter. So how much less will the devil approach now when he sees not that figurative blood on the doors, but the true blood on the lips of believers, the doors of the temple of Christ. If you desire further proof, of the power of this blood, remember where it came from, how it ran down from the cross, flowing from the master's side. The gospel records that when Christ was dead, but still hung on the cross, a soldier came and pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there poured out blood and water. Now the water was a symbol of baptism in the blood of Holy Eucharist. The soldier pierced the Lord's side. He breached the wall of the sacred temple. I have found the treasure and made it my own. So also with the lamb. The Jews sacrificed the victim, and I have been saved by it. 
There flowed from his side water and blood. Beloved, do not pass over this mystery without thought. It has yet another hidden meaning, which I will explain to you. I said that water and blood symbolize baptism and the Holy Eucharist. From these two mysteries, the church is born. From baptism, the cleansing water that giveth rebirth and renewal through the Holy Spirit, and from the Holy Eucharist, since the symbols of baptism and the Eucharist flowed from his side, it is from his side that Christ fashioned the church as he fashioned Eve from the side of Adam. Moses gives a hint of this when he tells the story of the first man and makes him exclaim, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. As God then took a rib from Adam's side to fashion woman, so Christ has given us blood and water from his side to fashion the church. God took the rib when Adam was in a deep sleep, and in the same way Christ gave us his blood and water after his own death. Do you understand then how Christ has united his bride to himself and what food he gives us all to eat? By one and the same food we are all brought together into being and nourished. As a woman nourisheth her child with her own blood and milk, so doth Christ unceasingly nourish with his own blood those who he himself hath given life. Through the prayers of our holy hierarch, John Chrysostom, O Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. In thy kingdom, remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile and persecute you and say all manner of evils against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in the heavens. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Remember us, O Master, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Remember us, O Holy One, when thou comest in thy kingdom. The heavenly choir praiseth thee and saith, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Come unto him and be enlightened, and your faces shall not be ashamed. The heavenly choir praiseth thee and saith, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The choir of holy angels and archangels, with all the heavenly hosts, praiseth thee and saith, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all his visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, of one as to the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was in heart of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the conscious Pilate and suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is with the Lord of God, who is the of the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sinners. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pardon, remit, forgive, O God, our offenses, both voluntary and involuntary, in deed and word, in knowledge and ignorance, by night and by day, in mind and thought. Forgive us all things, since thou art good and the friend of man. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Our glory, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and on the age of ages. Amen. Amen. Come, let us all praise him who was crucified for us. <coughs> and Lord, we bore him on the tree and said, Though thou endurest the cross, yet thou art my Son and my God. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Blessed be the name of the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and from henceforth and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the Lord shall my soul be praised. Let me hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and exalt this, let us exalt, exalt the same together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my tribulations. Come unto him, and be enlightened, and your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his tribulations. The angel of the Lord will encamp around about them that fear him, and will deliver them. O oh, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that hopeth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, all ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Rich men have turned poor and gone hungry, but they that seek the Lord shall not be deprived of any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there that desireth life, who loveth to see good days? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Turn away from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their supplication. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, utterly to destroy the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cried, and the Lord heard them, and he delivered them out of all their tribulations. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a contrite heart, and he will save the humble of spirit. Many are the tribulations of the righteous, and the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. The Lord keepeth all their bones, not one of them shall be broken. The death of sinners is evil, and they that hate the righteous shall do wrong. The Lord will redeem the souls of his servants, and none of them will do wrong that hope in him. Glory to the O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Right now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father, bless. May he who for us men and for our salvation accepted the dread passion, the life-creating cross, the voluntary burial in the flesh, O Christ, our true God, through the intercession of his own immaculate, no blameless, holy mother, the supplication of the holy glorious and the laudable apostle Peter, the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim, and honor and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. To the prayers of our Holy Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. After the veneration of the cross, we're going to ask you to visit outside of the nave and to keep quiet in the name. I have a few confessions to hear. I greet all of you heartily in the name of the Lord. Uh, the next service will be at 3 p.m. It's the Vespers of the Taking Down of the Cross. We'll start at 3. That will go to about 4.30, and then we have a 6 p.m. service for the, uh, the Lamentations, the Funeral Service of the Lord. And that 6 p.m. service uh, will include a uh, procession it's supposed to be still cool, so um, you know if you're amenable to being cold, um, you might get a little chilly out there. So you might want to carry a little something to put around. God bless you.